This is where the story of the aurora starts, on the sun. A star of average size among billions of other stars in our Milky Way. Using satellites, we can image the sun's dynamic atmosphere, called the chromosphere. Here we see bright, intense regions and how violently the sun behaves every second, every day. In some cases, large amounts of gas are also hurled out into space. We call these eruptions coronal mass ejections, or CMEs for short. They thrust billions of tons of particles at speeds up to 8 million kilometers per hour. During solar maximum, solar storms can occur several times per day, and sometimes they are aimed in the Earth's direction. When the solar storm reaches Earth, something strange happens. It's as if it is deflected by an invisible shield, the Earth's magnetic field, the magnetosphere. The magnetic fields couple together and create a funnel for the gas streams down on the daylight side of the pole. This is the daytime aurora, which our eyes cannot see. The magnetic fields stretch further rearwards and couple together. The magnetic fields, stretched like a rubber band, break, and gas from the solar storm streams back along the magnetic lines towards the polar regions on the night side. This is nighttime aurora we can see. Here is a more detailed view of the particles while they are travelling along the magnetic fields. Eventually they collide with atoms in the Earth's atmosphere. These collisions usually take place between 80 to 300 kilometres above ground. Here they cause oxygen and nitrogen to become excited and to emit light in much the same way as in fluorescent lights or in advertising neon signs. The result is a dazzling dance of green, blue, white and red light in the sky forming in a ring-shaped area called the Aurora Oval.